Um, hi, everyone. First of all, I like to say happy Friday and happy weekend because obviously this is the end of the week panel and I welcome you to VCTV. Um, uh, this is the weekend uh, panel of VCTV, which is the Venture Capital TV. And um, this is from LaToken. And LaToken is uh, one of the digital cryptocurrency exchange, uh, the top 20 um, in the world. So today topic is about education technology and e-learning. We're going to discuss about a founder's perspective. We are also going to discuss about the investments uh, in the space. So before I jump into um, introducing my, my speakers uh, for tonight, I'd like to just start by introducing myself. My name is Sunny Mohanty. I'm the regional director of uh, La Token, and I'm based here in Singapore. So I host VCTV, which is the Venture Capital TV, Monday to Friday, and we cover several topics. And every day is a different topic. Um, the whole purpose, uh, the whole goal and objective of VCTV is to connect investors and founders and entrepreneurs um, in under one roof, under one platform. Because, because as entrepreneurs, you know how difficult it is to get that funding, how difficult it is to get that right contact, get that right network, get that right advice and, and, and mentoring from, from, um, from people to get scale up, to get traction, you know, to get that um, uh, other levels of, uh, of rounds of funding. So it's, 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 it's a, difficult, a difficult time. It's a difficult time and more so because of the pandemic, things have become much more difficult. So hence um, this platform, we are here to help you. And that's where we connect you with the investors um, that we have in our community. Uh, so that's about VCTV. That's a bit about a bit about the background about VCTV. So today is the Friday uh, episode of VCTV. So guys, please feel free to uh, uh, just be a little relaxed. Nothing serious about the uh, the topic. Both all of you, please be relaxed. It's going to be fun. Let's make it fun and engaging. Let's end the week on a fun high note, all of us. So we have people from UK. We have people from. Florida, we have people from Singapore, we have people from India. So let's make it fun. Let's make it lively uh, before we end the week. So first of all, I'd like to start with uh, um, uh, my, my speaker from uh, who just joined VCTV for the very first time from Singapore. So who is a founder and who's an entrepreneur and he owns uh, a tech startup. So John, welcome to VCTV, happy Friday. How are you today? And please start with a short introduction about yourself. Thank you, Sony. Thank you. Really great to be here. And hi, everybody and panelists and hi everybody who's, uh, who's watching. Um, wish everybody a good Friday. Uh, now, uh, uh, so I'm very happy to be here to share some of the, the journeys that we've been through because it's really, really challenging in the COVID situation, right? Uh, especially for education because Students, a lot of students can't go to school, they have to learn from home. So they face frustrations, the teachers are facing frustrations. And that's why an interesting phenomen phenomenon is, of course, um, teachers are looking for technologies, education technologies. And, and all of a sudden, um, we are advancing education technology with much, much faster speed than, than, than before. And edtech um, become uh, from something uh, which is good to have to be must have. And I'm sure every teacher uh, is using technology every day right now. So uh, it's a big challenge for every one of us, even for, especially I, I think for ed tech companies, because we have suddenly uh, increased the user base and we have to uh, make all of our uh, teachers uh, facilitate them with a new uh, way of teaching. Yeah, so that's the situation faced uh, in the ed tech space right now. Absolutely. We understand right. that. I mean, the education was a space who got, which got disrupted very early on because of, you know, mm. uh, the, the, the virus that you can't, I mean, social distancing and physical distancing. We're going to uh, hear more uh, um, about your challenges. What, how did you um, sail through these challenges in the last uh, couple of months that we're uh, oh. facing uh, later on after the introductions uh, of, of our other speakers? So next, uh, so and welcome to uh, VCTV, John. Um, uh, next, I have Guhesh from India. Welcome back, Guhesh. Welcome to VCTV, the weekend episode of VCTV. I, and I love this episode of VCTV, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Please. Same here. I look forward to <laughs> speaking once again. Quickly, just to let you people know, I run a company called uh, Excubator, uh, which is based in India. I'm also a partner in a small fund out here in India, which is called C Fund. Uh, 
while we have not made any investments in the edtech sector yet we have stayed focused upon other deep tech sectors but the edtech sector is actually beginning to look hugely interesting at this point in time we are working with a group of startups coming from india coming from korea south korea we are looking at startups coming from israel at this point in time which are doing some fairly interesting work in the edtech space i'd be happy to share some of the the the, the interesting work that's happening in this space thank you again yeah. for having me sunny thank you guesh thank you and welcome to vct we always love to have uh, you on our panel thank My you pleasure. so much <laughs> so next we have a new speaker from uk who is an existing uh, client to uh, to la token and he's been with us for a long time anand from uk hi anand welcome to vctv how are you today you're on mute anand you can't, we can't hear you Yes. Uh, by the way, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, Sony, yes, again, as was quite pretty straightforward. You know, as soon as you came, I was not even ready. But yes, thank you very much for letting me into this uh, show. Uh, yes, uh, right. So, as um, I would just like to say a little bit about our background of our company as well. We started this project back in uh, early last year. We thought that you know this is something uh, which is in the blockchains. We wanted to enter in such a way. Uh, through our own tokenization of our uh, our token in terms of ad tech, it was totally uh, out of the way because our plan was come, look, let's let's start this way. First of all, we come from a background of education. We run around twenty one educational establishments all around the world, actually, and then our plan was to move on forward from the schools environment to a university system. So we we thought about way to set up a university. So we went to uh, searching around different locations. Start, thought from India, even we were planning in Singapore. We planned to set up a university in uh, in in Thailand as well. But then we chose uh, Central Europe to be to set up our next project, which was the university business. So we uh, got the licenses, got the certifications, and we started to run our university in Paris. After that, our main plan was to do something next because we are a, a large group. and we always wanted to grow in such a way where we are seen as a fully uh, technically sound group not just providing education but our main goal is to take education to the masses uh, in other subcontinents where there's a lot of commercialization right now education the institutions is all about business for them but we want an aim to provide education at the cheapest cost so our plan was to go public rather than private limited you know to go public we we, we did connect with companies like uh jp morgan uh you know companies like uh price for our scoopers to go actually public through our own token as an ipo but then we thought is it really worth going as an ipo in a single country for example if you list our our share or the stock in say bank of stock exchange or or say indian stock exchange or new york stock exchange or any other stock exchange rather we should go global through our own token uh as a, as an ico so that's how we got connected with uh, la token and uh with the partnership and we introduce our own ad tech currency which uh, we and we said and we wanted to be one of the main currencies for uh, education is an ad tech currency so then we launched this project uh, as a global platform which is pedagog for which i am just one part of the person there are a lot of people involved in it there is a ad tech team running it there are business development officers and we were a large connection of universities uh, you know tutors and around 450000 plus uh, tutors who are involved and connected to us so this platform itself is not like uh, just a place to use a, a, a learning management system but it also provides tools to to a tutor or a course content provider to use and utilize these tools to become an entrepreneur on our own platform plus we connect a lot of institutions globally coaching centers schools universities to not only use our lms but also use our white label platform to uh to to reach and to get into this education marketplace that's what we are offering through pedagog uh then we are offering a complete system in which we allow users to utilize uh online virtual classrooms we give them all those tools in collaboration with cisco uh because there's no point going towards something which is totally out of the scope because if we start building our own uh, virtual classroom system which we can't compete with amazon or microsoft or cisco which are the one stop worlds so we have connected with them in partnership to provide those services through our platform 
uh, to uh, different institutions and we are teaching them. And now the services we provide them is like unlimited classrooms, uh, live sessions, uh, uh, you know, storage and links uh, to all the students. Uh, and uh, when, when it comes to providing the tools of teaching, like example, John was saying, that is the biggest challenge right now we face to actually train the tutors to understand how to teach over this, this kind of a scenario, which is very important through COVID. Uh, we have provided training and we've got those sessions as well for a lot of uh, universities, tutors and, uh, and, and other coaching centers and small schools, starting from providing education to the children, to adults. So those blackboard scenarios on this uh, kind of devices, these machines, this video recording systems, uh, the teachers accessing the system and providing, you know, the blackboards and, you know, explain the, the students such a way that the integration is coming well, the engagement is coming well with the students. And then after the session, this, the, when the classroom is finished, they get their own individual links so they can come back and, and uh, you know, see the video again. They can communicate with the teacher through some messaging services. So that part is done. Then we are moving on to the corporate learning as well. Wow. You've got some specialized skills and courses. We right now have around 1200 plus courses, which we are adding on to our platform slowly and steadily. Right. And because uh, our platform is developing right now and we are going to beta launch very, very soon. We hope in around two to three months, we should be live. Right now we are signing up with institutions. We have around 400 institutions already connected with us who will be using our platform to, to sell the content, to use our marketplace, to use our LMS, to use our virtual classroom systems. And, and there's a lot more behind. Plus, one of the main thing is we're using a tokenized way of providing education through our own token known as LOL token. Right. And our partner to utilize that token to convert it back to BTC or Ether or you know, Fiat right. is hopefully gonna be LA token. Right. So how is yeah. making sense? Uh, to, you know, I've not said too much or much of, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. This no, I mean, the business model does make sense to John, I'm sure Guhesh and Gary as well. Uh, so I think John and you can find some ways to synergize and collaborate. Because I think so. Pretty interesting. Very, yeah, showing Singapore and you are also planning to, you know, sort of uh, leverage Southeast Asia. Let me just start with the last uh, but not least uh, speaker on the panel. Let, let uh, After the introduction, we're going to go and uh, discuss uh, about the trends uh, and the future of the edtech industry. So my last speaker, but not least, Gary. Welcome, Gary, to VCTV. Happy Friday. How are you today? I'm great, like always. Just fantastic. And uh, it's great to be here, Sunny. So my name is Gary Fowler, and I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm an investor, and I like to write a little bit. So I write some articles and have a little show that I put on. And, and uh, I'm all into AI because I talk about it time and time again. I mean, we are data-driven, and if we're not, we need to be because there's a lot of information that's out coming at us every day. You know, as I, I've said in several panels, I mean, think about our own environments we each in our personal cloud have about 300,000 items. And the entire World Wide Web in 1996 was 257,000 websites. So each of us today have that many items. In five years, it'll be 10 million. How in the world are we gonna be able to, you know, today, if I send you an email, you say, or message, where did you send it? Uh, I don't remember getting it. <laughs> so we're in a case of infobesity. So uh, anyhow, that's where I am. Uh, I have also, I just started a global accelerator that's really, really taken off. Um, and GSDVS gets you done venture studios. We curate some of the top AI companies in the world. Uh, we take them out and I've done, uh, I've had two unicorns. Uh, the last one was sold for 1.35. Uh, you're mute, Gary. Yeah, well, the last one was sold for $1.35 billion. Our right. unicorn. So anyhow, that's that's where we are, and it's great to be here. And happy Friday, and have a great. <laughs> <day>. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Happy Friday, and yes, welcome to the 
uh, weekend episode of VCTV, all of you guys. Um, so we are done with the introductions from all our speakers. You're all set. The warm up round is done. Okay, you, you, you forgot about me again, and I'm, I'm getting a oh little insulted God. now. Okay, oh, this is like the third time, third show, and Gary didn't even interject <laughs> and say, hey, you know what? Lewis, you forgot. Lewis, I thought maybe you slipped in because she said, and our last speaker, and I'm like, no, okay, no, maybe brother. I something. Oh, yeah. I was here I, waiting I, I, for I, I, I'll see you. <laughs> and then I came here, and I have another appointment. Appointment. I came here to the VCTV to try to uh, share some. Blame no, Zoom, to be honest. The I'll, ju I'll, ju I'll just be real quick. You know, <laughs> look, I've been in finance over 25 years. I, you know, I heard what uh, what John and Anand they were talking about. It's interesting. We we have a project. We're involved in AI, AR, VR, and we are involved in collaboration platforms. And we're doing some interesting things, and we have a an ed tech project that in, that incorporates security and facial recognition, all this stuff. So I like to connect with you guys. You should you should connect with me if you can, uh, so we can see because we're looking to do good things, not only in the United States but globally, and because there's a big need for it. All right. So, uh, but you you can find out more about me on fgapartners.com and see the things that we're doing. And thank you, Sonny. See, Minnie and, and, and whoever that other little bear is should keep you informed that, hey, I'm here. I, I exist. Oh, my God. I feel like Joe Biden. Okay. Uh, I'm all alone in the world. <laughs> I, I, I know. It's, it's like, wow, you know. I'm not used to that. I'm used to getting a little bit of attention. Jeez. Minnie's got a company today because she's always on her own. Sorry about that. Sorry. Tony, you should talk to Zoom. <laughs> this is a problem because uh, when somebody in the in the in a lobby, you don't know, right? You don't get that exactly. notification. Yeah. I wasn't in speaker view. I just could see uh, Gary. I couldn't and see Louis. This is why I don't use Zoom. This is why I don't use this platform only to come on here. By the way, <laughs> have you have you tried? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go on, go on. Sorry, John, go on. Do you know this this viral product, new viral product called Mhm? Mm mhm. Mm yeah, by the yeah, I heard, by, I heard about it. Right, right, right. Yeah, I heard about that. That's <laughs> that's, that's pretty viral. Yeah, they they, they, uh, raise it, a, they raise a bunch of capital lately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they're trying to change the uh, user experience of video calls. Uh, so it works with Zoom. It works with uh, like Google or Teams. I think it's pretty cool. It's like, uh, it, it's it like they viral. do overlays and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's what we're doing with Vero. We're doing the same thing. You have overlays, you have frames, you have a lot of things that you can yes, do to make yes. the user experience a lot better. I think Great. people are bored with normal Zoom. So people are getting yeah. creative. Yeah. yeah, we got Sunny Zoom over here. Sunny Zoom. Sunny Zoom? <laughs> it's you. Sunny Zoom. Okay. Oh, I like that. It's a brand. <laughs> you made me a brand, Louis. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, so John and Anand, um, so um, Guhesh, Lewis, and Gary are regular speakers on VCTV. So we they speak on Asia panels, they speak on US panels as well. So we got somebody in US as well, Kyle, who moderates the sessions. So yeah, so they are these are regular speakers and great uh, people, investors, and with a lot of insights across all the industries. You can you can name uh, you can name. So yeah, it's best place to is the best place to actually connect with them and you know build some solid relationships. Uh, okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, John, I'd like to ask you about your um, experience during the pandemic, because you are a founder yourself, right? You are an entrepreneur yourself. So we talk about a lot of, uh, we discuss topics about uh, how the entrepreneurs um, are surviving during this pandemic and what kind of help they need, but we have you on the panel to share your um, journey, your experience this year, especially uh, beginning of this year. Thanks. Yeah, so um, the solution that we, we, we build is primarily solving a problem uh, of teacher-student interaction in the 21st century. So uh, you may know in a lot of spaces, um, in a lot of classrooms, the teachers are teaching and uh, they are not able to interact with every student. Right. So in a traditional classroom, I can only pick students to answer questions, but with one to one device arrangement, the students can all answer questions and teachers can get data from students and they can have insights. So, for example, in Microsoft Teams, you can actually plot the students progress over a period of time. So that will need students to have the technology, have the hardware devices to 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 interact with the teacher. So we provide the way to 
to facilitate teacher student interaction. Right. And then we plan to launch this product uh, around middle of the year. But then um, early April, you were in Singapore, you know, there's a circuit breaker, right? That just right. happened. So um, early April, when the product was not ready, the wave hit us and we are all working from home or this yeah. home-based learning. So we said to a team, why don't we just launch it right now? Because uh, although the, the full feature is not ready, let's just give everybody to use this for free. And we emailed a few a few lecturers that we know we, we, we have been connected to. And then it's just started. And then I realized that how how uh, demanding uh, our technology uh, tech, uh, right now, because all the teachers, all of a sudden, they're looking for, for solutions because the teacher-student interaction is kind of lost in the online teaching. So right. we, we, we serve a lot of uh, higher ed. So the, the, the problem that they face is they can use Zoom, they can use Teams. But as a teacher, how do you make sure the students are listening? Absolutely. Your students could be like uh, uh, having a, a burger or, or watching a TV. Uh, uh, you just don't know they're listening, right? So our tool became popular, uh, sort of uh, a little bit viral because we, uh, our tool is built into PowerPoint. So you can do all kinds of uh, uh, interactions within PowerPoint. So you can turn your slide into questions. Uh, you, can, you can ask students questions, you can pull and you can run quizzes and you can, you can have these uh, open-ended questions and allow students to use their browser to answer your question. And teacher can on the fly get all the um, responses saved and analyze students' res responses. So immediately, I feel that um, the, this uh, problem faced by teacher uh, is getting a lot larger because of this uh, um, uh, interaction mm -hmm. loss. Because in a physical classroom, you can engage with the students, you can interact with students just by looking at them. Right. But when you are teaching online, if the students just turn off the video, <laughs> mute themselves, how do you know they're listening, right? So you have to use the, uh, the technology to maintain the interaction with them. So you can see in, in Zoom, you have Q&A, you have posts, yeah. you have all these, uh, although limited. Uh, so what we do is to provide a way for every teacher to, to do it right inside PowerPoint. So, so we work with Microsoft uh, ecosystem. And the reason we plug into PowerPoint rather than create a new app is we want this to be very easy because now it's, we are already at the stage that every teacher needs technology. Right. So very soon after April, we're now in uh, 57 countries. And that is because of the large demand. Uh, just recently, I, I don't think you can, you can grow that fast in 2019, but just a few months later, right, with the COVID. Uh, so we're, we're thinking, how, how, how to design a product that to spread like, like a pandemic, like COVID, you know? <laughs> we want the product to be like COVID as well. Yeah, so that, so, so that actually shows how, how much technology or how much urgency it is right now for, for teachers to get uh, useful and simple technology that they can use in their daily teaching. So in April, so during the pandemic, you expanded your business to 59 countries? Right. That's, that's the thing. That's how fast it is. We are, uh, so all of the users grow organically. So we have users, of course, we, in Singapore, we can contact our previous customers, but we don't have, we have uh, some footprint in the Southeast Asian region, but we don't have in other continents. Uh, but then soon after, uh, I think also is because the tool is embedded into PowerPoint. Uh, it's easy for people to understand and get to use. So quickly, now we have uh, like users from the US, from Europe, uh, right, UK, uh, Africa, uh, you know, Middle East, um, Australia, everywhere. Um, we are very impressed uh, because now it's, um, I would say people are more connected, uh, just like we're having this call now. Right, uh, so, yeah. so th this becomes a daily. So every day we have a few video calls maybe, and we, we, we don't have the limit uh, of location, uh, limited by geolocation just now. We, we, we talked with, uh, Gary said, he, he cannot even remember the time, right? Even time zone is not a problem right now. So yeah. I think people are more connected. That's why information spread more quickly uh, right now. 
Wow. And that, this is John, yeah. firstly. Um, you know. but what's the name, what's the name of something. your platform, by the way? What's the name of uh, your product project uh, platform, John? Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. it's called ClassPoint. You can, you can search Google ClassPoint. You can uh, share so it's a SaaS, um, in the chat. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, 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 I'll type into the chat. Yeah, what I was going to say, John, I commend you for what you're doing. And I think that the Thanks, integration please. into the platforms is is what the, the, the UI on that is going to it's 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 clean. It's simple. And if your mom, if your mother or your grandmother can use it and they find it simple, basically, it'll be something exactly. that will to a lot of people. And you do that's smart as opposed to trying to reinvent the wheel. So you're yes. doing something good there. Especially that's what teachers need. They need something they can immediately use in class rather than, you know, right. spend time to struggle and to learn and forget and relearn and remember what, what people don't realize that teachers if you if you if you equate them to a phone they're like an iphone one or two and you're on iphone 12 so you have to <laughs> help them to to come right. to the modern times you know exactly, so that, exactly that's important i just want to tell you that john yeah, yeah. I think anybody working in the ed tech space will understand that and, and try to make something that they will use very quickly. Thanks, Luis. I just couldn't help. I just couldn't help noticing, John, that uh, you know you named a number of countries, but you never named India. So I'm just curious. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. India is also one of the top. One of the top. Because uh, we also. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. So we we noticed because uh, we 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 started our YouTube channel. Um, a few a few months ago, and starting at the starting point, we published videos about uh, you know you know Microsoft Teams and all these things, and that, at that time that was uh, highly demanded. Uh, so I think the top three countries on our YouTube, I think it's the U.S., India, and Philippines. Interesting. As these are, these are the top top countries, top countries. Um, U.S. I thought for sure would be U.S. is a huge market, and India as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big population. By the way, how, how is the situation in, in India? Are schools all closed right now? Everything is closed right now. Everything <laughs> Not just schools, right? Almost. <laughs> uh, so there is some talk that says that schools will probably start opening by the first week of November. But first there's still a lot of fear, uh, primarily because, uh, you know, the number of COVID cases is con continuing to rise. Uh, right. I mean, the, 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 the curve is dipping. But mm. the number of cases is not uh, going down. I mean, we are still not reached the situation where we are flattening the curve. I think mm. a lot of people are genuinely worried in terms of, you know, sending kids to school where they will start interacting with older people. And we have seen the results that happened in the US, right? I think a couple of universities, they opened up and within, I think, days, uh, they had to close down the universities because they started showing 30, 40, 50 uh, COVID positive cases within days in those universities and in schools. Uh, so I think that's part of the fear out here. Mm. Uh, however, the interesting part that, that you know I noticed, and I am going to take a look at class point, uh, which is what is the number of users that you have over here in India? I'm just curious. Um, I have checked the data because uh, in India, it's, uh, uh, it's not a country that we actively closing deals with. Got it. It's just we let the users grow organically. Got um, it. And then we're using the data to guide us sort of like which country to, uh, to go. By the I'd way, uh, before that, that we have, yeah, we have partner in India, but uh, in previous few years, we kind of focused on hardware. And mm -hmm. that's why we have partners in, in the region, in Southeast Asian region. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, another takeaway that we got was um, um, the new SaaS program that we developed uh, quickly grow uh, globally. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's because as a digital product, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a lot easier to spread. Um, and, uh, and, and as Luis said, the, the integration with, uh, with PowerPoint definitely helped uh, a lot. We had, uh, we had a meeting with uh, Microsoft. They also liked the idea and we're meeting them next week as well because they want us to build interaction with Teams because a lot of uh, students are using Microsoft Teams and they want the data to go directly into Teams mm -hmm. um, for teachers to get analytics. So that would be cool as well. Um, I don't mean to interrupt you, uh, but I just had to drop off. I just wanted to say uh, thank you. And everyone on the panel, you can connect with me. And you guys have a fantastic weekend. Keep doing a, the, the great job, Anand and John. You're doing amazing things. You too, Take Louise. care. Have thank a good you. weekend and see, see, you, see you soon. Take yeah. care. See you. Uh, so, John, I'd love to stay connected with you. I think there's some interesting stuff that uh, we could talk about, at least for India. Sure. Uh, there's a lot of work that's happening in terms of uh, you know the government putting in uh, 
uh, serious interest in terms of what is it that can be done in terms of you know boosting digital literacy uh, mm. or literacy through digital channels in india in multiple ways uh, so i think it's definitely a question that that we can have i mean it's definitely a conversation that i think we should have sure so we should talk i yeah. do have your uh, uh, linkedin address uh, linkedin uh, thing i'll connect with you on linkedin then we'll take okay okay thank you uh, guys i've got yeah. gotten that group created in linkedin for you to collaborate and you know thanks share. that's awesome thank you so much <laughs> so uh, so john just talk, tell me a bit about uh, are you both strapped like uh, did you have any private investors um, mm. uh, in your company or how did you scale up uh, you know during the yeah time? yes we we bootstrapped uh, five years ago uh, before that i was working in university uh, I, i worked in the national university of singapore for eight years um right. so i i was a little bit uh, quite familiar with uh, especially higher ed and what the teachers need so we started but i you know i had no experience in business um i majored in physics right so yeah so i did a few years of research also in physics um and that was uh, the time that i stepped out uh, to to do business but i had no knowledge so we decided to bootstrap because um i thought this will be a slow process you know the at day one if you get money but you make the wrong decision you'll die quicker right so we started to bootstrap uh, and uh, spent every penny uh, carefully um and then really figure out um what the the t- um, teachers need by talking to them so i i did a lot of interviews and surveys and find out just exactly like louis said teachers want something simple very very easy to use So yeah. a lot of tech products fail because they're not simple enough. So right. if this is not something that can be self-serviced, uh, I would say it's very hard because this we're not talking about enterprise product where you have you send the sales people do tons of trainings. Right. Uh, you can't do that do, do that to teachers, right? Um you would make their uh, life tough. Uh, so <laughs> so instead of helping them, you are adding uh hiccups and barriers to them in, in teaching. Every minute in the classroom is important. so they don't want to waste time so as as a tech product it has to be both powerful and and extremely easy to use so in class point we have to um uh, in, uh trick uh, i mean track all kinds of behaviors from from our users and uh we check the funnel so how many coming you know how many activated how many uh people users actually reached the aha moment and how fast they got this aha moment to realize the value of this product and how frequently they use um a, 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 a the day-to-day uh, uh, uh usage classroom usage and we figure out we even built in in uh in app help desk inside of class point that's also inside of powerpoint so that when they have questions they didn't need to uh, go and ask their colleagues and and their uh, it so uh, this is an interesting story a, a school said you know if our, our 500 teachers all use class point wouldn't my life be very miserable because i'm the it support right <laughs> so we have to tell them you don't need to worry because uh, you know everything that we can solve can be solved directly because uh, our response time is within a day so a lot of teachers they like our service because we connect with them on zoom on teams and helping them to solve a question uh, solve the right. solve the issues um mm-hmm. and then we also feel that because this tool is easy to use our users start to sell the tools uh sell this class point to their colleagues not yeah. actually sell but but actually recommend they do the training they do the demo so we didn't need to do that and thanks to a very very simple user experience that we we pro- yeah. provided so Wait. that's a that's a oh sorry sorry am i taking too much time uh no no the thing is uh, uh just uh, um, we have a hard stop nine and this is a friday i just don't want yeah, to yeah okay okay uh, yeah 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 sure 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 fine so just want to ask one question what's the underlying technology your platform is built on because gary is is very much a technology person and he's about mm. just design. so is it like yeah. saas based product is it subscription model okay so yeah 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 we kind of we sasified a desktop application so as a in, as a plugin for power powerpoint we can we can't use a web app if this is uh, this thing stays on a website then it's not a native integration right we want to build native integration so it's a it's a vsto um adding for for office uh, it's based on dotnet but we specified it 
every users use their email address to 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 log in and we've That's also cool. made some, made that like office 365 that can be auto updated very easily and in terms of business model yes we we charge subscription a month per year we also charge per school uh yeah right. that's how it yeah okay great so john thank model. you so much thank you so much yep. i just want to ask anand quickly what's the difference between uh, uh, having a edtech platform on the blockchain technology with a token uh, on, on that and what just john has shared and for the investors i'd like to ask you as well what's more appealing to you in terms of investing So, uh, uh, so yes. I'd like to start first. <laughs> yes, certainly. You know, as like John said, a lot of technology uh, stuff he's talked about is pretty amazing because uh, that is the most important thing right now to provide the best of the best solution uh, for the problem which uh, you know teachers are facing using the technology part. So they access, so somebody could access their platform in easier way and you know provide what they want to provide in terms of education is pretty good. Our focus is totally separate. we are providing a mix of a lot of things uh we provide a learning management system uh for institutions to access because providing online education is not just you know providing the coaching itself on virtual classrooms but accessing uh the full database in which you can add up your courses you can add your students you can add teachers you can give them rights to the teachers to access a certain classroom and the class and the teacher accesses their own set of teachers uh, sorry students and students setting submitting the assignments the assignments getting auto checked for anti plagiarism and uh, so those kind of tools is what we focus on now um, we we our system generates reports when like suppose for example in an lms in a particular course there are say 10 lessons each lesson gets checked auto according to the data filled and then it generates a report so this just the, the teacher of a particular institution who has signed up on our platform would get an access to that tool which auto checks and gives and generates a report to make it this is kind of uh, uh, providing the access to make it easier for them to provide coaching not just virtually which is a separate part of this business virtual classroom is very important obviously bringing engagement you know teaching guiding and making them learn and making them understand but the database behind in terms of the lms itself is also very important those tools are also what we focus on uh so then we have a white label platform in which we giving access to a tool a page for a, a an institution a coaching center or you say a university to access the full marketplace because we are looking for not just monetizing big way in it but we as a main aim is to go in economies of scale to the large with the least cost in education and the money is automatically there so we like we have cut down education by introducing uh licensed mba courses from three institution with two semesters in one one uh with basically a mix of three universities providing that mba uh with three semesters in different different uh, institutions on our platform cutting down the cost of mba to just 1400 euros and the similar credits you could achieve in the uk university at 9000 euros so you can see the shift of uh, with the same amount of credits because we can do that because it's all business it's all commercialization they are selling the same credits at 9000 so those kind of skills are what we're looking for we're introducing new courses uh which are a mix of from different universities with different backgrounds with different accesses with different teachers teaching a particular semester that is what we are focusing on right corporate learning is another part of the business introducing specialized catalogs Ooh. now again coming back to the blockchain why we said is because academic honesty is one of the most important thing now right. on other platforms what's happening is people are providing and doing the courses but nobody knows who has done that actually the assignment itself mm -hmm. so that part of the business on blockchain the certification stored every single activity of a user is actually controlled and saved in with to the blockchain uh, which gives their own hash and gets stored which can be pulled out anytime obviously we can't disclose the data and the gdpr of the child, of the student but there are certain things which everybody can go and get a certificate through that blockchain now we also planning to introduce like a uh, pedagog solutions in terms of recruitments so that is the future stage is future right. next step of uh, our phases and right. another thing we have thought is digital personality testing system through which we will be using the blockchain introducing it and linking it with the thumb thumb uh, you know thumb uh, uh, prints of a student so the data can come through uh, you know the all the data will be through the thumb prints which we are working on it which involves some hardware integration as well so we're talking to some 
suppliers, how to integrate that in our teams. So yes, blockchain and then coming to token, obviously you understand like bitcoins and all these tokens are there. So they are for a certain reason. So we, in the same way, for example, we have had some basic problems for providing online education. A student in, for example, say in uh, say South Africa, they wanted to do a course in uh, a university in Paris. So they pay, make a payment to PayPal. PayPal charges nearly four and a half percent, roughly. Yeah. And after doing the course, they do a chargeback. They say it was a fraud. That was one problem. And they asked for refunds. So that is another problem as well. With the introduction of our own token, token, mm -hmm. the, first of all, the payment is instant. Secondly, secondly, uh, you know, the fraud system is less. The, the the savings part is less. The money, the 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 cost from the business to going going to the visa or Mastercard is less as well. The transaction fees are cut down as well. Plus, at the same time, we can cut down our cost much at a much uh, uh, you know higher pay pace for providing education to the public and the community. Right. And the goal is to take education to the masses, not just commercialization, but again, to make money is massive. According to us, I mean, uh, there are like eight, nine different set of uh, revenue models in right. this whole project. And yeah. we want to back it through our token. Absolutely. Great. And that's um, the way moving forward. Absolutely. I got it. I got, I, obviously, I am in the blockchain industry, so I understand. Uh, sorry, thank you, Anand and John. I just want to quickly ask Gary. Gary, you've uh, just seen uh, two um, founders right in front of you. So what are your, what are, what are your uh, thoughts uh, about each of them and what, what can you add on to, uh, you know, just on the topic today? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, in terms of what we're really interested in this, you know, what we've said today is there is a massive issue. This coronavirus could last another two years. Yeah. And during that period of time, we've got to figure out how to be able to educate better, how to be much more efficient and effective in it. And the technologies that are out there like immersive education, being able to hyper-personalize, being able to have that camera on that child to be able to understand from a behavior standpoint, what's happening with that child so you can make the education better. The good news is something, this should have been done a long time ago. All this technology, I mean, education has not been uh, that efficient and effective. So, you know, I'm encouraged by the times today. So if we look at, you know, where we are, we look at, you know, more automated schools, more data-driven insights, uh, and all those kind of things have to happen. You know, they were talking about the this happening over the next 10 years. Well, we don't have 10 years anymore, right? <laughs> so um, what... What I'm really interested in personally in, in, um, in our portfolio, in fact, we added about 11 more companies in our portfolio right. uh, recently. And what we're looking at from an education perspective is how do we take AR, VR, XR, and how do we incorporate that? Because think about this experience. I mean, the good news is that you're home. The other thing is you can be anywhere. So imagine a classroom that can take a trip to Africa and go down into a... Uh, to look at the lions and the elephants and the uh, uh, mambas and everything else that's out there, the, a truly experiential opportunity. So it doesn't really matter where you are, right? It matters that you're all connected together on the same trip together, on a, a virtual bus together, going into the particular uh, safari. So imagine being able to go back in history and to be able to look at a particular event and to be able to understand it or to go to the moon so, and those technology, I mean, that's, it's happening now. So I'm encouraged about it. I think that as we start to make it more three-dimensional in a sense, so you can really feel that experience, then it changes everything because we never had that before. We had flat books, we would read a book, memorize, and that's it. But now you can become part of the experience. And I just, I love it. So, you know, that's, that's my take. And of course, artificial intelligence is a huge part of this because the data is coming out and coming in. Imagine being able to take a student and customize experience to explore mathematics in an entirely different way or physics, to be able to understand what it's like. What is gravity, right? Mm -hmm. Let's take a trip to space. Let's understand what gravity really is. So that's what I'm encouraged about. And, you know, to the, um, you know, I applaud uh, ed tech today is more important than it's ever been. And so I applaud the startups for, you know, taking an initiative on it. And I think it's, it's a great time because people need to, to go online and people need to have more efficient education. So it's a great time for them. 
Thank you, Gary. So both John and Anand, I mean, you just heard like, you know, all the ideas coming from Gary as well. Um, how to- Gary, I actually have a question for you. Um, uh, I like the idea of uh, VR, AR. Uh, how do you see this uh, trend growing in developing countries? So we, if you want to have these technologies uh, in, in education, you suddenly need infrastructure, right? You need good internet connection, you need good device uh, processing power. So how do you see the, um, uh, you know, uh, students from developing countries to receive an equal, equal opportunity for this kind of education? Well, I mean, the, the good, I just wrote an article in Forbes. If you Google my name, Nikola Tesla's dream comes true, the democratization of opportunity. And so, I mean, 5G is going to really level the playing field, right, for a lot of right. places. And so the speed of change in those developing countries is going to dramatically increase because the opportunity of democratization has never been like it is. Um, and so in terms of, I've been in develop, I was in Russia when Russia had gone through some pains and, you know, they said it was a third world country. I personally lived there 14 years. So I've seen those companies, uh, those countries uh, dramatically increase. It's going to happen faster now, John, faster than we've ever seen before. So 5G, you know, uh, is going to just uh, permeate through there very, very quickly. And it's going to give people an access to everything. And how is it? I mean, it doesn't, it takes one, one, one person, one group to be able to help move, uh, get the momentum gone. When we, when I was in Russia, uh, so just an example, we started a, 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 an accelerator over there. People said it could never be done. And uh, Russians weren't really ready for it. It wasn't the right time. Well, we started it now there's, you know, turned into a massive movement. So it just takes one. So the technology will be here. You don't need the kind of infrastructure that we had before to be able to support it. And you don't need the same, you know, the, it used to be before you had to have an, a really expensive uh, a phone to be able to set up to do the uh, VR. It's different now. And I think it's, yeah. it, you know, it's, it's going to happen very, very quickly. So the startups just like yours that want to attack this kind of market, Now's the time to get out there. The problem is people do it after it's already started. I'll wait and see. And I've seen this, mm -hmm. I've done 16 companies, right? And I have a billion, $2 billion companies. You got to get in ahead of time and understand this is 5G is going to drive it. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you yeah. get a chance next week, I have the top person uh, from Intel that runs um, Internet of Things and uh, Smart Cities. Samir Sharma, if you get a chance, listen to that, get a chance to dial in. You can see it on our website, uh, gsdvs.com. But it'll be very, very interesting because he's the person that's going to talk about, Samir's going to talk about 5G and the impact it's going to have around the world. Let me just add to what uh, Gary was talking about, right? Uh, John, you were specifically talking about third world country. I'm going to take it you know, one step further and, and literally take you down to some of the smaller villages that we have seen in uh, India, right? Mm. And I'll try and share that article with you about how a school teacher, uh, not one of the best educated people in the world in India. I mean, let's let's understand this because to get a school teacher's job in India, what you need is something which is called a B.Ed., a Bachelor of Education, which is not really considered to be a very very high level of education in India itself, right? But this teacher was passionate enough. She was teaching biology. She literally used simple tools that were available to be able to create AR experiences that she was putting out for her students. So essentially, she was literally dissecting a human body on, uh, you know, so she was standing next to uh, a screen and she was displaying the way in which a human body could be dissected. I mean, first layer, you peel off the skin. Then the next layer you peel off is the muscle. The third layer that you peel off is, is, for example, you know, the bones and then getting deeper and deeper and that kind of thing over there. All this she was doing with essentially commonly available tools. Uh, things like, I, I, I don't know, power director or, or you know, some of these products that are available literally on mobile phone apps to be able to create products like this. The entire thing was transmitted uh, on literally 3G kind of networks. Three, and, and India is pretty strong in terms of 4G. So I'll go with what Gary is saying. 5G happens, 5G is going to be a game changer in terms of communication. And I think many third world countries uh, are at this point in time because they do not have the, 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 I mean, how do you put it? 
past mistakes to 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 kind of uh, back away from i think you will see 5g adoption in places like india much faster much faster i'll yeah. try and send that uh, link across to you i think you'll find the kind of work that people are doing in uh, edtech using technology is actually fascinating one problem we're facing so, is you know like people in african continent which is a big market for online education especially for us because we have a number of educational institutions uh, they do not have facilities like laptops desktops uh, mm-hmm. those quality hardware because mm-hmm. of uh, monetary concerns because of mm-hmm. the funding they have uh, obviously we need so certain we we need systems we are providing trying to provide education over the mobile phones but again mm-hmm. the quality of the phones even though the network comes the hardware will always be a challenge so in this new what we have done is we are we are actually we introduce a new course because and got it approved by the french government uh, mm-hmm. mofa for the ministry uh, which is like you said bed in india like there's something known as teacher for learning so we yes. have got a list and uh, a data and a connection with our uh, 450000 tutors in african continent and we giving them that education obviously through on a platform through signing up and we give them that certificate and that quality education which is through videos and personal or uh, up to 1000 uh, uh, you know people can come on our you know virtual so we can we've, we've done so stages after providing them they get a certificate and that they get some that quality uh, coaching providing knowledge and a certificate itself with which they will get some tools etc to train makes sense so what and then and about? then on that basis as well uh, yes yeah, so i mean you know that is the challenge and then that's the reason we are cutting down the cost of education making money is no problem you know there is a lot of business can come through because education is obviously one of the highest levels uh, as we see in the next 4 or 5 years but um cutting down the education reaching out to the masses having a global platform is thus what our focus is but yes that challenge you always face about you know how to provide them those uh, hardware facilities to access the system even the 5g might be there but i you know that is a bit of a challenge but we need to find a solution for that as well cutting down some cost we can cut down the education cost prices of uh, you know we can low down the fee structure but to provide them that thing you know that that tool to access that education that is still going to be a bit of a challenge because that is a big market for us right so you go with the challenge right mm-hmm. so any sorry guesh you wanted to add something to the challenges my my point is no i'm not going to try and add to the challenges we have enough challenges at this point in fact <laughs> but i'm just saying that you know what i find interesting is that innovation has always uh taken into account uh what already exists mm-hmm. and then built on top of that right? right uh which is what i see happening in a lot of places for example you know the, the same example that i used just now of uh this lady teacher in in i think somewhere in telangana in ap and i think you know if amit had been there in this call he might have been able to add some uh details over there because i think yeah. he comes from that geography yeah. himself right uh but they have used existing uh you know really low cost cell phones 100 dollar cell phones which are what are commonly available over here uh created compelling content on that and being able to transmit it to students on 3g kind of networks all i'm saying is that you know innovation needs that mentality by which you're turning around and saying that look you know i let me build something on top of something which is already available similar to what john has been talking about right that says that look you know he built something on top of powerpoint which is one of the most commonly used blasted platforms i mean i hate powerpoint myself but still look it is one of the most common things that that, that people uh, use and teachers you know they 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 literally create these things on powerpoint right So you've taken something on PowerPoint, you've embedded something into that, and then you're saying, "Hey, you know, use this to actually, you know, solve a real problem that teachers face." The problem that teachers face today is not in terms of being able to deliver content. Hey, they can deliver content on Zoom, they can deliver content on, you know, Teams, any one of the products that you're talking about, right? The biggest problem that I've heard from most teachers today is that they're turning around and saying, "Look, it feels like I'm talking into a vacuum." Mm. Right. and when a student turns off his or her camera or he or she goes on onto mute and i've seen that happening when my son does that my son is in uh, the 10th grade right now so he'll wake up his class is started at 8:30 i hope he's not listening okay <laughs> he'll wake up at 8:30 sorry his class is started at 8:30 he will wake up at 8:25 oh really he's lying in bed i'm not joking he's lying in bed 
so and he's got you know a tablet uh, you know one of those samsung tablets that is sticking around over there he said that as an alarm for 825 so the alarm goes off he just picks up the tablet and he's sitting there and he punches in saying that okay i'm available no video no audio the number of times that we have heard complaints from teachers that look these kids are not coming online so i do not know what they are talking about uh, i do not even know if i am able to get through to them is a much bigger problem than you know the technology yes, that exactly. available to transmit that so if you are measuring interaction even without video i think you are solving an enormous problem because all that you are doing over there is you are turning around saying hey you know what you don't need video to track interaction if the guy is answering questions heck yeah. he's interactive i mean he is interacting with you right that is what i'm talking about and that's that's what i meant anand as a really innovative approach to be able to solve a deeper problem which is that of teachers not being able to track uh, interaction that that's a fundamental problem i'll tell you something more 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 creative right we we know a school will force the students to open their cameras so that mm-hmm. they make sure they attend in the class but You know, Zoom has the uh, the virtual background, background, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. some students record a, a video of himself or herself and use that as virtual background to replace himself themselves. How creative is that? Do- I caught my son doing that. <laughs> okay, so okay. I had to pull the plug on. Yeah, so yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's become right, you understand. So smart during the pandemic, I think the children have become really smart. <laughs> smart, right? But Not teachers smart. will be headed, right? Big headache for yeah, teachers. so they they do all kinds of stuff right i mean for example they set up their exactly. own discord servers and certain they are asking of questions. gamification is needed is a certain form of gamification kind of thing to engage exactly. while learning that's, while teaching yeah, that's exactly what we call since all stuff you know that to engage them to build excitement to actually come and learn and study you know that kind of a right anand yeah. because you know when they're playing games have you seen them they don't just <laughs> uh blink yeah. their uh, eyes for a even for a second they're so engrossed in playing games so if they can do that and... why not education right yes. and games are not easy as well they're play- playing all those complicated war games i've seen like you know so difficult right. games <laughs> yes yeah, so what we do is to make games simple and just uh, insert mm-hmm. games into powerpoint so every teacher can use that mm-hmm. yeah that, for that's example let me, let me let, let me just add an a uh, point in this right while personally i do not see uh, most governments uh, encouraging gaming coming in into education uh, because education is treated as extremely serious and gaming or gamification is a slightly different kind of a thing over there i do know that my son for example has learned more about uh, civic rights uh, by playing this game called i think 270 uh, you know which which kind of mimics the the us elections right okay. so he's learned more about that then uh, by using that game rather than going through an entire course so yes i i agree with what you are talking about but the the problem is that you know by the time something like this actually happens and by mm-hmm. the time uh, you know the 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 powers that be that that decide what educational standard should be blessed i think it's a long way off that's fine yeah right mm-hmm. i'm going to clap up now mm-hmm. i'm going to leave it to the rest of you Sure. Thank you so much, uh, uh, everyone, for sharing their insights and views and journey um, today with us. I think for my 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 take would be like education should be for everyone, you know, because that in the back in the old days, education like the MBA somebody mentioned, um, it's so expensive. It's not accessible to everyone. Like in Singapore, you know, John, like the private education is very expensive, right? I mean, why should mm-hmm. the education be so much expensive right so if startups and founders like yourself can come up with solutions where education is made available the same standard of education is made available to the masses then you are solving a big um, problem and creating an impact to the society as well so that's my um, closing remarks for the session i would say uh, technology obviously is a big trigger in bringing education to the masses and we have seen that during the times of uh, pandemic as well um so yeah um i would like to have um anand and john um to speak about your closing remarks for the day on the topic something for our investors and other speakers and audience to take back from the session so john you being an entrepreneur been in the education uh, education space for a long time 
you've seen the ups and downs, um, you've seen good times, bad times, and surprising times like what you just said. So what's your closing remarks for the session today? Well, I think if there's only one thing we can learn from the pandemic, I think learning must go digital, right? So that, that and we use technology to prevent us to, to and students to suffer anything like this, because we, um, learning is digital, uh, it can be, it can happen anywhere, you're, you're from home, you're, you're using any of your device, you get access to a lot of things that you can learn and you can also interact with the teacher. So what we're trying to do is to bridge every teacher to yeah. the tech, to the year of technology because it's already not a good to have or possible to have thing. Is it something that we need to equip every teacher with? So right. that's my closing remarks. Learning must go digital. Absolutely, I totally agree to that and should reach the masses. Uh, what's your feedback about VCTV? Because we, we would like to, because I really like your insights as a founder, we would like to have you back on our um, uh, other panels like we have. So what's your feedback about this VCTV format that we have? Well, I like this format, it's, it's, uh, it's like chit chat and you know we, we come from different angles and different places, different time zones. So our views are sort of, uh, we have a lot in common but we also have views from different angles. So I think it's a great exchange of ideas, talking to you guys, founders and, and investors and yourself. Thank you, John. I really enjoyed it, yeah. Great, great. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, I'm going to move to Anand now. Anand, what's your closing remarks for the show? Well, um, uh, again, first of all, it's been a lot of learning and uh, you know, talking to everyone, a lot of insights as well things which we can, uh, you know, integrate, uh, you know, moving forward again, you know, learn, learning is uh, always the best thing, you know, uh, getting new things. But what we feel for, for the closing point, what I would like to say is this technology is, should be used for the benefit of the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that can be used in the proper sense, rather than just thinking about, uh, you know, monetizing our own businesses, then it won't find the real solution. So uh, if the aim and the mission of the company is right, the business will always come and high, at a higher level business will come. So we focus, we have to focus on those key areas, those key problems and building and providing this technology uh, technology to be used at that level. Then I think nothing can stop and uh, for any business. Great. I think that's one of the main things. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. What's your feedback about VCTV? Because you really wanted to come on VCTV. Yes. <laughs> yes, certainly. You know, I, I, it would be much better if my tech team is again with me as well. That would have answered the questions in a much better fashion. Uh, but mm -hmm. obviously, um, it's, it's great. It's a lot of learning. It's new. It's, it's, it's good as well. We do coaching uh, sessions with our own staff, but uh, externally, like the first time, it was a bit of a hiccup in the front for me, you know, but yes, it's all went well. It's very good. I really liked it. I'd love to be again as well, obviously, and with more better preparation, to be honest, and with my uh, seniors along with. Absolutely. No worries, Anand. We'll definitely have you back on our show. Thank you so much. Uh, what's your feed? Okay, sorry, you just said that. <laughs> sorry about that. Thank you so much. Uh, Guish, what's your uh, uh, closing remarks uh, for the show today? Once again, thanks a ton. I think it's been insightful as usual. And I look forward to being on other panels of, of, of uh, VCTV. Thank you Short so much. Week. Yes, and obviously, I think you like the format of VCTV. That's why you keep on coming back Absolutely. on the panels and yes. And we, we like to have you on our panels as well, for sure. Uh, thank you. And last but not least, Gary, what's your closing remarks and uh, feedback about VCTV? Yeah, so this, as we said, the digital transformation education is upon us. And uh, it's been forced upon us, but the effects can be an incredibly uh, lasting and provide that democratization of opportunity. So I'm really excited about it. Um, you know, you can reach me, Gary Fowler on LinkedIn, uh, Gary at gsdvs.com. I'd love to hear from the startups, from other investors. And I love VCTV. <laughs> You're the best, Sonny. So we, I enjoy being here and I enjoy uh, being with Kyle and you and all the VCTV team. It's a really great experience and it helps uh, spread the world. And I'm hearing a lot. I get feedback from all over the world about these events. So uh, you're doing a great job. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you so much, Anand, John, and Guhesh. So that's the whole idea about VCTV is to connect people, uh, the like-minded people, uh, you know, where we have other problem solvers and the people are looking for the solution, right? So, so startups and founders who are looking to raise funds, who are looking to connect with investors, who are looking to um, gather some knowledge like what we did today in the session, they can always reach out to Gary, reach out to um, Guhesh, uh, on our platform through www.lawtalking.com stroke shows. And under shows, you can see events, pitches, and we have several different categories for you to have a uh, look at. And if you're looking to pitch John and Anand, if you're looking to come on forthcoming sessions of VCTV uh, on our EdTech platform, please feel free to reach out to Carol, who has just uh, sent you email, um, uh, you know, inviting for the show. So we can just fit you on a panel where you, we have a different set of investors and speakers where you can share your um, uh, details about your project if you're looking to raise funds or looking to do an IEO listing or you know, if you're if you from the crypto industry. And awesome. for investors, and for investors it's, this is a platform for you to connect and network with other investors, um, you know, um, build relationship, collaborate and stay connected. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for all your time. This is a Friday evening for me and John over here. And I understand, and obviously Guhesh, uh, the, the evening is coming for you as well. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. I'd appreciate your time and your insights today. Um, I'm going to be back. I host the shows Monday to Friday, no weekends. <laughs> so I'll be back on Monday with another topic, with another set of speakers. Till then, stay connected, stay safe, and have a lovely evening and happy weekend as well. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. Gary, Thank you so much. Like to, my pleasure. Gary, if I may, I will email you. I'm connected to you on LinkedIn. I think some of the stuff that you're doing in GSD, uh, 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 this one, I think that there are some things that, that I'd like to pick your brains Absolutely. on.